Hello, everybody. Welcome to another session of Pastor Doug's Virtual VIP Midweek Bible Study. And I got a cushion I'm sitting on, so I'm hauling up. And I just realized that I could lean forward and be way taller than Doug. And I told him, he leaned back, and I said, well, make your head look really small. <laughs> really glad that you guys are here today. And I, I want to tell you, what a, what a wonderful time to be alive. And I want to say that uh, understanding uh, the turmoil within our country, um, you know, I, I watched this morning before I left the house on the news, there was a police officer, maybe many of you saw it, that, that came in contact with fentanyl. And she was flat on her back and they're trying to revive her. And she, she came around. The good news is she came around. But thinking about how crazy things are out there in this world. And I'll tell you, if there was ever a time to attach to a loving Savior, it's now. If there was ever a time that, that you really didn't needed a secure basis for your life, it's, it's right now. There's a lot going on in this world. There's a lot of things pulling you in that opposite direction. Uh, this past week, the, the message topic was helping everybody try to understand the eternal, the, the large picture of what God's creation and God's love for us is all about. And I, I really think we we become so um, minimized, if you will, in our thinking because of our lives and the you know just the day to day things going on. We be, we get overwhelmed. We have to pay attention to the details. You know, you know everybody does in our lives when you have families and kids. And not only I've watched like my wife with Robin and our children growing up. I mean, she lived her life. She lived her life as as my wife. But she had to live the life of each kid as a mom, making sure every kid had what they were supposed to have. And then sometimes it even gets worse as they get old and they have their own families as well. It, it just be, becomes way, way too involved. And so it's easy, I think, and maybe, Doug, I don't know if you would agree with this, but it's easy to kind of lose sight of the big picture of God. Definitely does. And, and we get caught up in our busy lifestyles and, and schedules. To the point that uh, we don't know if we're coming or going sometimes. Our life becomes very chaotic. And uh, we, we kind of survive. But we've done it to ourselves with these schedules where we try to do too much. And then we completely lose focus over what the priority is. And it should be God. And if that's our focus, then everything else seems to fall in place a bit more. We can actually have the freedom to say no to certain things. I, I just don't have time in my schedule to do that. If I put God first, put church first those obligations, then, oh boy, I'd really love to go out and do that with you and help you, but it's going to have to be another time because I'm, I'm just doing other things first, first things first. You know, I had, I had a thought this week, and it's not directly along these lines, but I think it was important and I want to share it. Uh, we had a quiet Christmas service last week, and it was really a neat service where we kind of gather and it's it's the designed for folks who are having a hard time and they're having trouble and and the holiday season is what it is, but it's not totally joyful in their life. They have they've lost loved ones or whatever. The situations are just tough. And um, I, there was there were people that were at the service. I'm not going to get into details of names. That that doesn't matter. But there's some people that were struggling. They were there, and and I noticed this this these two folks. They got up and they they walked out halfway through because the pressure was too great. It was uncomfortable. It was, you know, dealing with things that, that are hard to deal with and painful. And they, they walked out and I thought, hmm, you know, we design these things to help people. And then I was thinking about the disciplines of life, the things that, that are good for us. Almost none of those things are easy to do. You know, if you think about it, let's take it to the athlete who has to work on getting really good and strong and powerful. And so they got to exercise. And when you're lifting weights or running or whatever, you're breaking your muscles down to the point where they're they're done and then they rebuild themselves. And so it's painful. That discipline of exercise is is painful. Sometimes there's medications that you have to take and you have to be disciplined to do it. It's something they don't taste very good or the pills are really large or I got to go get a shot to, to help protect me or whatever that might be for. That discipline isn't very good. And, and sometimes the pain and the discomfort of addressing the things that are pressuring you doesn't feel very good. 
but you got to do it to move ahead. Counseling, you've got to expose some of the issues you have in your life in order to address them. It's uncomfortable. Um, I do a lot of counseling where we have husband and wife teams and, you know, they have to address the things that, that aren't just, they're not meshing on very well and it's uncomfortable, but it's done for progress. You know, the discipline of, of man, I'm hungry. I'm not eating every single thing I think I want to eat in order to lose weight or gain control of a uh, better control of my health. Every discipline requires some discomfort. And, and sometimes we got to, we got to think about it that way. So when, when I have to get up early to prepare for Sunday mornings to come into church, yeah, I'd like to sleep too. I'd like to rest like everybody else might want to do. But I know when I come into this place to God's house, it's, it's a big deal and it matters and it really influences my life. You know, I don't know if people think about it that way. Have you ever thought about that? The mm -hmm. disciplines of life are sometimes mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. There is a purpose. <clears throat> There's God's purpose behind pain and suffering. Of course, we don't like it. We don't want to do it. We choose to avoid it, if at all possible. But like this couple that you mentioned that left our, our quiet uh, Christmas service. If you are so focused on the pain and the suffering, that's that can be all you know. And then you lose hope. Uh, I can tell you a personal story. My dad died December 24th, 1971, Christmas Eve. Oh I love Christmas. You know, that's a painful memory, but I don't focus on that. I, I've moved on from, from that being the issue to focusing on on being there with the rest of the family that are still with us. We don't have any guarantee for tomorrow. We don't know that we're both going to be here, or either one of us, or any of us can be here tomorrow. So we live mostly for today. We plan for tomorrow, but we live in the here and now. That's the present. That's the gift that God gives us. Christmas is an amazing gift where God gave us the ultimate gift. He gave us his son. So if you focus on that, yeah, your pain is still there, but it puts it in perspective and you can live with it knowing that you have that hope of resurrection, that hope of life eternal. You know, and, and I think, I think, folks, we need to move beyond how I feel. I've told you this before. Feelings can lie. Feelings can mislead you. Feelings can oftentimes stymie the advance of some positive thinking sometimes. You know, and, and when I was preparing this message this past week and I was really struck by the fact that uh, the Bible says that everybody has this interest or need of a God within their lives, meaning they everybody feels like there's more to this than just the here and now. And they may be the furthest away from professing believers in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, but they still have it inside that there's something more. And I can't tell you how many times, it's countless at this point, how many times people in their last days are an injury or something's happening or they're facing death and all of a sudden they want to know about God and they want to know what's happening afterwards. So that's within us. And I think that's a powerful thing to realize that everybody feels that way. Everybody has that feeling of a need for something that maybe God is there. And I think it's so interesting to me how people seem to go out of their way to try to convince themselves that God isn't real. And, and, and they'll just use all kinds of different examples, all of which are really easy to debate and, mm -hmm. and to discount. But God has planted that within you, that need for him, that, that understanding that there's something there. I think there's a scripture that shares that from Ecclesiastes that I'm going to tell you about. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. God has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. What does that mean? Well, we always talk about in, in various jobs, like in my job plan, having the big picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we, we have our little sort of blinders on for what's affecting me here right now in this moment. But uh, to have the big picture, to have decisions made outside of what's affecting me, what I'm choosing, um, I don't I don't know all the details. Things are being decided around me that impact what I'm doing. And if I don't know what's going on, then I can I can be very limited in, in making good decisions. 
It's hard to make a good decision without all the information. And we don't have it all. God has it all. You know, we have, I saw one uh, explanation said, it's like we're looking at life through a knothole in a fence, a wooden fence. <laughs> you can see part of it, but you don't have the big picture. And that's what we really need to know. And that's where we have to trust God because he has the big picture. He created the picture. You know, we were, uh, as a family, we're working on a, a business deal that isn't related to this discussion. But uh, in our discussion, we were, were saying, well, we're going to have to trust somebody. And um, I want to challenge you today. You're going to have to trust somebody. You're going to have to believe someone. Are you going to believe your own understanding? Are you going to believe your knowledge? Are you going to bet your eternity on how you understand life to be? Or are you going to check it out? And I say this all the time. In fact, early in my ministry, I said it a lot. I used to say, you know, kick the tires of Christianity a little bit. If you're not sure what's going on, come around church. Hang out at Faith Church for six, eight weeks. See how you feel. You know, ask if there is a God. Say, God, if you're really there, help me feel something. And see what happens. Kick the tires of Christianity. Because you're going to have to believe somebody. You can believe a guy like me or a guy like Pastor Doug who or share information with you and say, here's what the Bible says. But you're going to have to believe somebody. Are you going to believe that that friend who never read the Bible, who doesn't follow the ways of God, who hasn't even thought for half a second about eternity? Or are you going to believe somebody who's dedicated their lives to sharing the good news of Jesus. I'm not saying I'm the authority. I'm saying you need to find out. You need to figure it out. You need to check it out. I encourage you to do it yourself. Get into the scriptures. You know, there's there's a, a great video series called A Case for Christ that, that the guy really, he was a, he was a, a, an atheist and he was actually a, a, a legal reporter for the Chicago Tribune, I think it was, Lee Strobel. And he went through and he investigated it. He talked to the, the translators of the scriptures. And, he, and he, he really put on a case for Christ and it changed his life. You know, there's stuff like that out there. And all, all my word is, is, is to say, look, get into a Bible teaching church. Come by Faith Church. Be a part with us where we would welcome you. Each week we're going to talk about who God is and try to help with, with I think, are the misconceptions of who God is. Mm-hmm. Right, because a lot of people, maybe most people, you have little sound bites. That's the era we live in, sound bites. Oh, the Bible is full of errors. No one can really tell you the the hard facts behind that. They just heard things, so they pass it on. And then you think, oh, that's the way it is. Or I've heard that a lot. Yeah, that that uh, that Catholic or that Christian church over there, they're, they've got a bunch of hypocrites. Mm-hmm. Sure, we have some hypocrites. We also have some liars and some people who made all kinds of mistakes. And, uh, you know, that's because we are not perfect people. We've made mistakes and we're here trying to do better, trying to follow God's path. And that's what we're trying to teach you, what God's path is. So we can all get on that same direction, that same path. See, Faith Church isn't about being perfect. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Or I wouldn't be the pastor here. I'm mm-hmm. the most imperfect pastor there probably is in Schuylkill County. And we're full of imperfect people and we're doing the best we can. But here's the thing. We we understand God is the way and God is the truth. And and folks, God forgives me. God says, Doug, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to I'm going to wipe away everything you've done wrong if you acknowledge me. And boy, I love that. I love the way that sounds. That works for me. That's what I need. That's called the good news. That's called salvation. That's called beginning again. And I'm going to continue to trip up. See, people think this religion is for these holy roller people. Well, I don't know who the holy roller people are because because I'm not one of them. It's for those people like you and I and Doug and I that make mistakes, that make poor choices, that lose our way sometimes. That's who God came for. That's who God, Jesus Christ, died for. That's who he lives for today is folks like us, and, and he wants to help us. And we want to share that news with you. I'm going to be talking about this week about the five purposes that God wants us to live by as we live out our lives here on this earth, as we are preparing for eternity. Now, I, I saw something. I want you to lean way back. Lean oh, way back. Look how little your head is. Now, I want you to lean way forward. <laughs> lean forward. Okay. Now, see, your head is narrow, but now turn and look directly at me. Now, look how wide that is. See, <laughs> you know what my dad used to say? I don't know. My dad used to say, 
Just because your head's shaped like a hubcap doesn't make you a big wheel. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> this is my buddy. I love him. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope to see you Sunday. And if not, we'll see you next week on uh, Pastor Doug's virtual VIP midweek Bible study. God bless you. Have a great day.